So there's been a lot of talk lately about the artificial intelligence chat GPT and how it relates to software engineers. I've seen people concerned about if this type of technology will replace all of us at some point in the future. So in this video, I'm gonna explain how chat GPT is likely gonna change software engineering forever, but probably not in the way that you think. So what is chat GPT? In simple terms, I like to think about it as a chatbot on steroids. It's an artificial intelligence created by the company OpenAI and its specialty is dialogue and conversation. Normally chatbots that you'll see like if you're online and you're speaking with somebody at an online retail store it has pre-configured answers depending on what the user may input so depending on what you and I put into the chatbot as far as the issue that we have or the question that we have it'll give us a pre-configured response and best case scenario is if you don't like the response you can be transferred to speak to an actual live agent or a live person but chat GPT is not like that you can put in very specific instructions to this chat and it will give you a really good response so while most most chatbots give you a direct answer. ChatGPT has more of a human feel to it. You can have a conversation with it or you can ask it to revise the response that it gave you and you can give more detail and ask for an updated response. And this is what makes it so powerful. I wanted to try it out myself so I started the sign up process. I put in my email address and my name but then I got to a page to where it asked for my phone number. I don't feel comfortable putting in my personal phone number in a website like this so I tried to go around by creating a Google Voice number. The Google voice number is obviously connected to my actual phone number and I tried to put this number into the verification process but then I got this message here that it doesn't allow these type of phone numbers it has to be an actual physical phone number so this alone made me a little skeptical about all of this if somebody has done this and I'm missing something as far as why I need this phone number then please put it in the comments so since I didn't really feel comfortable putting in my phone number and something so new I decided to just do my own research and see other people's experiences so I could get familiar with it another way so what can it do you can ask it almost anything and it'll give you a really impressive response from writing essays to creating legal documents or templates and contracts to writing poems and any other kind of tone that you prefer and it can even write code but the general consensus is that over time and as the years pass along it may be able to start writing more and more complex code but for now it's great for writing boilerplate code and generic function so what is boilerplate code if you haven't heard of this before basically this type of code is something that you need in almost every project and it doesn't really change much. You can think about it as code that has the same type of structure no matter what the project is or no matter what the application is and you may only have to change some minor things in the code to get it to work for that specific project or an application. Some people have different ideas on what they say boilerplate code is but this is a general consensus of what that really means. For example like an HTML document it starts the same way it uses the same type of tags you might just have to change things depending on what kind of web page you're trying to build and this is where chat GPT could come into play. You can use it by starting starting off with clean boilerplate code every time. It's also pretty good at writing generic functions. That will basically give you the format of a working function and all you will have to do is maybe change the parameters or what you want the function to actually do. So with both of these methods, you can see how the chat helps to kind of take a shortcut and to help you write the code that you really don't want to write anyway. I haven't seen it do complex applications and there's a lot of talk about it not being maybe the best for applications that are really complex like banking or cybersecurity, but who knows if that may be a possibility in the future. But the the thing about all of this though is that this type of technology is not really new. Copilot, which is a code auto completion that was created by GitHub, uses the same type of AI that ChatGPT does. But as you can see on the Copilot website, it markets this service as suggestions for your code, not to actually do your code and complete all of your applications for you. So it doesn't have the entire answer to your code. You can also see that it mentions that it's better for boilerplate code or repetitive tasks and patterns, which as I mentioned before, the things that most developers don't want to have to code every time. Anyway. So all of the technology is the same between ChatGPT and GitHub's Copilot. They do function a little bit differently. Copilot tends to work better if you're starting to use it at the very beginning of your project because it can see your style of code. It can get more familiar with what you're trying to accomplish and what you're trying to do. And it'll give better suggestions as time goes on. ChatGPT, on the other hand, is not specifically made just for coding. You can ask it almost anything. So if you want something very basic or if you want something very generic, then you can ask it and it will give you a response. But I wouldn't look at at it as a partner like you could GitHub's Copilot. So what does this mean for us? What does this mean for software engineers? Well, to be honest, I think it kind of depends on your perspective on this. In my opinion, I see this more of a tool than anything else and a tool that programmers can use to get things done quicker or to do the task and the code that we don't enjoy doing anyway. But to see it as something that is gonna replace software engineers, 
I'm a little skeptical on that because our jobs are more than just doing code. And by working in this field for eight years and being around the business side of it a lot, I find it very hard to believe that companies will decide to replace all of their developers with a chatbot. The development process is very fluid from the point to where you're getting requirements to implementing those requirements and then bug fixes and enhancements. It requires a lot of conversation and a lot of dialogue. So to think about a company removing that entire team dynamic is very hard for me to believe. I do, however, believe that some companies may adopt it as a tool like I mentioned before a tool that can be used to get started on things quicker or to do the task that we don't like doing another reason why I don't believe companies will replace their developers with this chat GPT is because it can give wrong answers so much so to where Stack Overflow recently made a statement that any answers that were submitted from chat GPT would no longer be allowed Stack Overflow mentioned that the average rate of correct answers given from the chat is too low and it has been very misleading for a lot of users that are looking for solutions to the code problems. So when you look at the code that ChatGPT gives, especially if it's a lot of code, it can look correct on the surface until you actually put it in your environment and try to run it. And a lot of people will find the errors and bugs. And this is another reason why I don't believe companies will decide to fire the entire software development team and replace it with this artificial intelligence. Because the AI itself doesn't give correct answers 100% of the time. And then you're removing that team dynamic and that collaboration environment on top of it. So should you give up coding. We can't tell the future and we ultimately don't know what this means. And in my opinion, if you're still learning to code, I don't think you should spend a lot of time on ChatGPT because it's the equivalent of somebody writing code for you and you not being able to understand it, which is not where you want to be when you go into these interviews. So it might be fun to play around with and just kind of see what it's capable of doing, but I wouldn't take it as a serious method for learning how to code. It's more important to learn the foundations of coding so you can know how to build things on your own. So that way, if you do end up using ChatGPT, you can spot when the answers are wrong and you can spot when the code needs to be reconfigured. So I know you see videos and you see articles about everybody in panic, everybody scared about this thing, just replacing the entire industry. And I'm very skeptical on anything to where everybody is saying the same thing. I just don't see that happening. These type of tools aren't new. And in the end, I think all of them will be used by us to help us do our jobs quicker, but not replace our jobs. So if you're still learning and you're trying to get your foot in the door in the software field, or if you actually already work in the software and you're not sure if you should start looking for some other type of career, I don't think you should. The best thing to do is just to learn how to use these type of tools to make your job easier. So yes, chat GPT and artificial intelligence will change software engineering forever, but only by giving us a better tool to do a better job. But right after they stop requiring a phone number. So that's what I have for you this video. If you like the video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thank you.